Alright, here is the story of how I beat Factorio while giving the biters a small head start. We are playing a map on completely default settings with a tiny tiny mod. The biters start off at 100% evolution. Meaning we have behemoth biters from the start, as well as brutal biter expansion with a new enemy nest popping up every 4 minutes sharp, right from the game start. We tried to counteract Biter expansion by littering pipes everywhere, which got off the ground pretty slowly due to our other goal of reaching all achievements, including Lazy Bastard, which basically disallows any handcrafting at all. We then made a hard beeline for the car to explore a giant amount of land, to lull the Biters into expanding somewhere else then towards my base. This is very important because we cannot defeat or even defend against even a single behemoth biter until we unlock military signs and some pretty expensive ammo damage upgrades. Until we reach that point, the behemoth biter's strong armor and fast healing makes it effectively invincible. So we needed to get pretty far into the game without triggering a single behemoth biter attack by polluting their nests, so we went for a very strange base concept. The opposite of the usual, the factory must grow mantra. In this playthrough, the factory must stay steady, outputting a controlled amount of pollution which could be reliably absorbed by the surrounding forest before reaching the biters. So, in order to produce a small but constant amount of resources and the accompanying pollution, we opted to keep production going at all times by slowly but steadily collecting plates in vast amount of chests while we are out doing stuff. And, upon returning to the base, spent all the stocked up plates in quick production bursts in our special, automated hand feeding assembly area, quickly consuming and producing controlled amount of science packs and supplies by consuming iron and copper plates by the chest full. Well, after 5 hours of doing the pollution dance, we finally reached ammo damage upgrade 4, and we could go on the offense. Not an easy task with only basic armor and low level gun turrets. Who oh, is after me? Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Especially when there are ultra long range and highly dangerous behemoth worms in the mix. No, 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 no. And see what happens. And I'm dead. <laughs> to counteract the danger, we snuck behind enemy lines to the oil fields, taking with us enough supplies to make efficiency modules and a modular armor with energy shields right there on the oil fields. With the shields, we could survive a few bitten off limbs here and there, but there is still no way to defend against the economic damage, as taking out the beefy behemoth biters comes with an astronomical resource cost. We've had to spend tens of thousands of plates to make sufficient red ammo just to take out a handful of nearby small nests. But there's also positive news. With the power of modules unlocked, we put productivity modules in the labs to reduce research costs, and after many hours of doing the pollution dance by switching production on and off, we can finally put efficiency modules in our miners, significantly reducing their pollution output so that we can keep producing a steady flow of resources non-stop from this point on. And we severely need that uninterrupted resource production, because we have meanwhile spent half of the 15 hour time limit to launch a rocket, and we haven't even got blue signs set up yet. But by producing some batches of red chips and sulfur on site at our oil outpost, we can finally research the first few blue technologies towards unlocking personal construction bots while setting up advanced oil processing at the base. And we are making advanced oil. Nice. Meanwhile though, the copper outpost site we set our eyes on is getting more and more swarmed in by the expansions, and we need to make a difficult decision. Do we spend tens of thousands of copper and heaps of time on trying to clear them out? Or do we give up on the outpost idea, be very frugal with our copper spending and hope that we have enough copper in our starter mine to finish the game? After some hopeful calculations, I decide to give up on the outpost and stick with only the starter copper patch. It's gonna be very close, but we have a few aces up our sleeve to increase the odds of success. First, we beeline the mining productivity tech, which should make our copper patch yield 10% extra ore. But the copper may now be in the ground, we still need to get it out of the ground at a fast enough rate. 
So indeed, the other problem is the rate of copper extraction. The late game science packs and rocket construction are quite copper heavy. And while we may not need much copper at the moment, we need to start extracting it at the maximum rate possible and stash it for later use. So with a hard limit on the amount of copper we can produce, we need to be very frugal with spending copper on other things. So we will hopefully have to take out only 5 more biter bases for the rest of the game. These two, because, well, we're polluting them. And these three, which are blocking the iron patch. All other biter bases will stay on the map. Even these biters, which are nerve-wrackingly close to my only available oil source. After doing the calculations for the copper patch, which included figuring out how many science packs of each type we need to finish the game, we decide not to build what's generally known as a real base, but instead stick with our strange base concept of hand feeding assemblers by the chests full until the bitter sweet end. Now, I wouldn't recommend this playstyle for any normal type of game, but it just so happens to be perfect for this game for a few reasons. First, due to the threat of pollution triggered behemoth biter attacks on the base, we simply cannot increase production over time, and our efficient hand feeding setup is capable of a far higher resource consumption than the limited production we can achieve. And second, by deciding to go for our copper gambit, we must waste as few resources as possible. Now, in a normal base, it is unavoidable that tens of thousands of plates worth of produced but ultimately unneeded items are laying around across thousands of belts. And that's even before taking into account any additional resources stuck in chest buffers around the base. Now, this base doesn't have any of those belts or chest buffers, and we can convert the exact amount of iron and copper plates into the exact amount of stuff we need every single time without any accidental or unavoidable overproduction. To demonstrate, first we produce all remaining red and green science packs we will need for the rest of the game. 4000 of each, requiring 30,000 iron and 10,000 copper, which we then process neatly and precisely into the exact 4000 belts, 4000 inserters, 4000 iron gears and 4000 copper plates we need for the 4000 red and green science packs. Not a single plate was wasted in the process. Now, that doesn't mean we have to stick to producing everything by hand though, but instead of allowing limitless resource access, we can limit the input by supplying specific amounts of resources to individual setups. For example, this green chip block. 
and our red chip set up here in the north. Red chips, by the way, are the hardest to work out, as they are used in a ton of different products. And if we accidentally overproduce those, an iron chest full of red chips costs a whopping 32,000 copper. So that would probably mean game over. Anyway, after making sure that research keeps on going, we finally get around to oil cracking and prepare the stuff we need for personal bots. In fact, why don't we just immediately make all of the 800 electric engines we need for the rest of the game in this temporary setup? Anyway, it's all temporary. The whole game, the whole game is a temporary setup to get to the rocket, after which we are going to build a normal base to get the rest of the achievements. <laughs> 400 for yellow signs, 200 for the rocket silo, and 200 for personal use, which means the power armor, exoskeletons, and personal bots. Nice! By the same principle, we reserve space for the last 800 raw sulfur needed for blue signs, and we reserve half a chest of copper and iron to mass produce all of the batteries we will need for the entire game. We also need some early blue chips for our power armor, so we prepare our end game blue chip setup. We won't start it up just yet though, for now we just make exactly enough for the power armor and some exoskeletons. A neat trick we have been doing at the copper mine is storing up any copper ore overproduction in excess of a yellow belt of copper into chests. At the moment, we are producing slightly more than a yellow belt of ore, but as the game progresses, this mine will dry up and production will fall below a yellow belt. When that inevitably happens, we can feed out the current overproduction by sideloading it onto the main copper ore belt keeping the miners prioritized and producing at all times. Meanwhile, our power armor is ready, and with the exoskeletons, we are finally able to speed across the base. Let's look at this. <laughs> yes, baby! Oh, this always feels so good. Our increased speed will also come in handy when running for our lives in combat. And soon after, we unlock our much desired personal construction bots. Now, not to build the base, as we aren't building one, but they will be extremely useful to build the walls and gun turrets before combat, and for the messy cleanup after the takedowns. Constructing, repairing and deconstructing our fallback point and turret defense was costing us a lot of time before. I tried postponing our inevitable attacks until this point, after we unlocked personal construction bots. And man, does it pay off. And I just start to fill them with ammo already. Yeah, this dynamite. I might have a switch off the robot box. Let's put some selection dots in here. Let's go. Oh, I forgot to change out my arm stuff. Oh, I'm here right around to me. So let's clear. Oh, oh, I'm dead. No, I'm not. But I need to retreat. Go around again, the other side. Try again. A lot of gun tests go past everything close by. So they focus the nests. That behemoth biter is definitely not focusing the nest. I'm stuck in the forest. Let me out. Okay. The combat itself though is still quite hard and dangerous. Is everything dead? It looks like everything is dead. Holy moly. I thought it would be easy now we have power armor. <laughs> well, apparently not. Anyway, while we select the last six technologies we need to be able to launch a rocket and finish the game. Rocket control unit, productivity module, speed module, and then the rocket silo itself. And that is all the text we'll need before uh, being able to finish the game. 
we take out the other polluted biter base and the three biter bases protecting the iron ore patch. And 11 hours in, with just 4 hours remaining on the clock, we can finally access our glorious new iron patch, extracting two full yellow belts of iron for the rest of the game. Of those two belts of iron, we dedicate one full belt to steel, as we will need a lot of steel to make the 1600 purple sign specs we need. But by this time, our home copper mine is starting to struggle and is unable to keep the furnaces supplied. So it is time to start feeding out our earlier overproduction, trying to keep our full belt of copper plate production going for as long as we possibly can. And with all business outside the base being taken care of, we can start to prepare for the late game science packs and the building of the rocket itself. With a stable pollution situation, no attacks or other interruptions are expected anymore, and everything becomes a numbers game from here on out. While we wait for the steel to produce for purple signs, we start preparing for yellow signs. We need 1300 yellow signs packs, but as we will use productivity module 2's, we can get away with producing 1200 signs packs worth of ingredients. This means we need 400 robot frames, 800 blue chips and 1200 low density structures. However, we roughly need an additional 1200 blue chips and 800 low density structures for the rocket and whatnot. So in total we need 2000 blue chips and 2000 low density structures. Well, that's gonna cost us an immense amount of resources, which we don't all have in stock yet. So to easily keep track of things, we decide to produce those in two batches. The first batch of 1000 blue chips needs a whopping 20,000 green chips and 200 red chips. This equates to 40,000 copper and 24,000 iron. And that's only half of the blue chips we will need. And that's only for the blue chips. We will still need low density structures, robot frames, rocket control units and so on. Anyway, we finally use our bots to build actual parts of the base, as we start to produce the first batch of 1000 low density structures. There goes another 20,000 copper. And suddenly all our stocked resources are spent. Take all the plastics. Meanwhile, we already saved up the full 10,000 plastics we need for low density structures, as well as the 100,000 light oil we need to make the 720 rocket fuel we need. So this is 100k light oil in the system, which should be enough according to my rough calculation. All right. So for the rocket silo we want 4 productivity module trees, but the productivity module trees themselves require 5 productivity module 2's each. So we need 20 productivity module 2's and we can use those module 2's to make the yellow and purple signs before we change them into the productivity module tree for the rocket silo. So that way we can get away with, we can basically get the most out of these 4 productivity module trees we have to make. All of the red, green and blue signs meanwhile has been produced and distributed to the labs. And we can move on to yellow and purple signs. We're going to make 1500 and by the same logic that's going to be more than enough to research 1600 science packs worth of research. So 1200 and 1500. That's why I have 4 and 5 assemblers here. Okay, so let's collect our robot frames. And let's see how many blue chips we already have. Alright. So this is half of the blue chips. And it's all of the robot frames. And let's just do the quarter stacking thing. And with only 3 hours left on the clock, 
we are starting to produce the first half of the yellow science bags. How is it going with the chests? Yeah, we are using this up pretty quickly now. Now that yellow science is producing, we can move on to making ingredients for purple science. Starting with... Furnaces, they are the easiest. Alright, so we need 500 furnaces, which means 5000 steel, 5000 stone bricks and 2500 advanced circuits. So basically a full chest plus two stacks, that does the trick. I wonder if we have the 5000 steel already though. Okay, that is 5000 stone bricks. Do we have 5000 steel? Yes, we do. Oh, produce 1000 units per hour. Exactly, I guess, that means they are finished. We just produced 1000 blue chips per hour, I guess, for one hour. Okay, so just one stack we insert in here, and then exactly a full chest will make the all of the other furnaces we need for science. Then we just need to add two and a half thousand. Red chips to the middle one. And that will do the trick. Right then, productivity modules. We need another two and a half thousand red chips for productivity modules, which means 25 assemblers. Let's do 25. So that's 10, 20, 25. And 2500 green chips. That is all the productivity modules we will need for purple signs. Not bad. We set up this neat assembler setup to make 16,000 rails. This is exactly 5 chests of rails out of 5 chests of stone and 5 half chests of steel, with some iron sticks sprinkled in from the south. Which means we can soon start producing purple signs as well. 500 of them, perfect. And with that, all of the infrastructure we need has been set up. Let's insert the first batch. So now we just need to keep machining our copper and iron into the proper stuff we need to make the remaining stuff we need. Like the second batch of blue chips and low density structures. And I guess we can just transfer the rail chest by chest, since we have 5 rail producers and 5 purple science assemblers. That should be pretty balanced. Then I guess this is approximately enough green chips. How much copper we still have? How much copper is still in the mine? 20k. Alright. These chests are now empty, so our production is has really slowed down as you can see. It's like barely a third of a belt. The extra copper ore chests meanwhile have run out and empty, empty, empty. All of this is empty. Production has truly dropped to an abysmal level. So what do we have then? To optimize copper extraction, we rebuild the copper mine to fit as many miners on the remaining ore center as possible. Better, yeah, 8 and 5 instead of 10 and... Yeah, that's better. That is the remainder of the blue chips. We don't need any more blue chips. And we need another 10,000 copper in here, I guess. Maybe we have that already. I think we do. Yeah, we do. Okay. Pretty good. Holy moly, how much copper we have left? Nothing, not even a chest. 
But that was all the copper we need. We literally have exactly enough copper available now. With that, there is not much left to do. We use our set aside red and green chips to make the 720 speed modules required for the rocket control units. Actually, let's make a few speed modules more for beacons and maybe the miner and whatnot. 20 more or something. Make the 1000 concrete for the rocket silo. Combine the speed modules with the blue chips to make the 720 rocket control units and start to set up the rocket silo area. And then we need a fish to send into space. Bend the fish. Okay, let's get him out of there. Bend the fish in the chest. Here you go. The rocket fuel is already done. So the first ingredient for the rocket. Check. As are the low density structures. <laughs> and this is going to be pretty tricky is to not craft the rocket silo by hand because then I will lose the game <laughs> since uh, yeah it's only after the rocket launch where we can afford to hand craft the game now we are just waiting for the rocket control units to complete but actually even more we are waiting for the rocket silo technology to complete okay let's collect the red and blue chips for the four productivity module mark trees as soon as the science assembles are done we can grab these and turn them into the mark trees. I figure we have enough extra purple signs to squeeze in the cheap beacons technology, which can drastically speed up the last science production as well as the rocket construction itself. And once we acquire said beacons, we can speed up the last science pack production. Alright, 1.05 on all of them. We also already collected all the materials we need for the rocket silo into a chest. This is basically the rocket silo. And indeed, all of the rocket control units are done as well. That should be all. Which means all the required stuff to build the rocket is already sitting in chests next to the silo site. Yep, exactly right. So we have some time to kill while purple science production completes. So we start up the production of ammo again and preparation of dealing with the biters post launch. We still have a long way to go to complete all achievements. Okay, one more cycle. Full chest of steel. And then five full chests of copper. We still don't have five full chests of copper. That is how thin we have been running. All of our copper is gone. Our copper production has slowed down to a trickle. Soon though, all science packs are done. And we can upgrade the 20 productivity module 2's we used to produce the expensive yellow and purple science packs into 4 productivity module 3's for the rocket silo. With that little tactic, we have truly extracted the maximum value out of the 4 productivity module 3's we needed to produce for the rocket silo anyway. And eventually, the final technology completes. 99%? And it's done. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's grab these beacons. Grab this. Not crafted by hand. Go to the assembler. Rocket silo. Two hours on the clock. All we need to do is produce the rocket, for which we have all the ingredients already. Let's insert the modules, plop down power, and here we go. Then we can speed it up a little bit with beacons. Auto launch with cargo, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> I didn't think we would do it. After the rocket has launched, we still have a challenge to go as we will need to claim the copper and we will need to build a real base. There goes Ben the fish up into space. Very cinematically, I missed the moment like a true professional. Anyway, here goes the rocket. 
up into space 13 hours and 7 minutes into the game we did it holy moly that's a lot of achievements nice half of the achievements are done half of the achievements are yet to go but can we still do it <laughs> while the game may say we have won the game by launching a rocket that doesn't actually provide us with anything new or special we can use to aid us in our fight against the biters military wise we are basically still stuck in the early blue science era and for the last eight hours or so we have spent all of our resources beelining the useless rocket instead of say researching anything useful military technologies or upgrades well it's a meager consolation that at least the biters haven't been evolving further either. I guess that's one of the advantages of just having maximum biter evolution from the very start of the game. I don't know, I'm confused. Well, anyways, we may still be doomed after all. Find out in the new post-launch series, where we try to continue on this map to achieve all that can be achieved. Or die trying next time.